Hello everybody and welcome back. This week I'm going to show some of the jerseys that I've collected. Uh, not so much all sports teams, but some of the oddball stuff. And then when we're done with the jerseys, I'll show you some of the collectible items that I've picked up from one of my favorite movies. So to get started with the jerseys, the first one is a hockey style jersey done with the New York Yankees. It's got a nice Yankees patch on it, New York. The American League symbol, but it's a hockey jersey. I thought about wearing this when I skated at Rockefeller Plaza. I even brought it with me to New York to wear it. But since it's been about three decades since I skated last, I was afraid if I wore something like this and got on the ice, people would expect me to appear to look like I knew how to skate. And it was pretty rough, so I was glad I didn't wear this. But I had it with me. I probably should have wore it, but I did. And then the other one is a hockey style jersey, is a Dale Earnhardt Jr. Budweiser Red number eight uh, with Dale Jr. on the back with the um, Dale Earnhardt Sr. Incorporated DEI logo on the sleeve. So I like that one. And speaking of NASCAR, I have a Dale Earnhardt pit jersey. Uh, thank you, BB for doing a lot of these patches on here. She'll know who she is. Wouldn't have it without you. But it, it came originally with the colors. This section was sewn, the number three with the facsimile autograph. And I was able to have someone add all these other logos along with the Chevy symbols up on the top and in the back, an American flag, my name, and this was already on there. So it was it was kind of fun to have this. I wear this every year on Daytona and Talladega days. Next one is one that I thought was kind of fun for the mink. I believe it was the Boston Red Sox. I forget uh, what minor league level uh, the team is in, but they had a Harry Potter night. And this was the jersey that the players wore during that game with Harry Potter. doesn't really have much on it but it's a Harry Potter themed jersey that they wore with the house scarf next is just a baseball jersey with the Buick motor car logo on it from back in the uh, probably early years of Buick it's plain on the back but my dad had old Buicks and that was fun jersey to wear next one is from my high school in Fairview Park, Ohio. This would be uh, something that would have been worn over, I think probably a basketball jersey, uh, but they had to change their team mascot and team logo. Uh, they were the Fairview Warriors back when I went there and this was, this would have been what would have been on when I was there. I played freshman ball and JV ball. Um, not very good. I was the runt, and you could tell. But this this would have been this was not the jersey that I wore. I don't think it was, but this would have been what I wore back in the day uh, from a sporting goods store, Lep Coombs of Cleveland, Ohio. And this was number six. It's kind of moth-eaten a little bit, but it's got some age to it, and this is. The style that I would have had if this wasn't my shirt. I don't know if it was or not. I don't think it is. But that's what I would have wore as a freshman. And then in JV ball, we would have advanced to a jersey of this style, which does not have a tag on it. This one's number 19. Much heavier. Um, this one's almost like a wool. And this one is, uh, I think, a nylon or synthetic. I'm not sure. Somebody would know. The next one I got in Las Vegas, we were just recently there and I was able to visit Hell's Kitchen and got a chef's jacket uh, with Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen Caesar's Palace on the breast. This is I think about as real as they come. Uh, they did have one with the blue, they didn't have the red, they didn't have the black, but if you I think if you win and you, you, you become his chef, you, you get the all white. So I, I was very happy with this. 
that was that was a fun thing to find. It was kind of neat seeing the restaurant too. They were very nice there. They let me go in and take some pictures, and uh, they they treated us very well. And I was glad Mindy got to see it. As far as the uh, the last jersey or last shirt, if it kind of looks like a prison shirt, it almost is. This was uh, one of the extras in the movie Shawshank Redemption wore this, and he would have been prisoner 34626. I'm not sure who would have worn this. It wasn't one of them that were on the screen a lot. Uh, it wasn't Morgan Freeman's. It wasn't Andy, Andy Dufresne's. Uh, since 1895 Brothers and inside it's got a, a tag or a stamp I don't know if you can see in red kind of see a little bit and that says the Western Costume Company Hollywood California so I was very excited when I was able to get this and I've actually worn it to the prison, the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio, when they had a Shawshank reunion, and I was able to wear this when I met the actor who played the warden in Shawshank. So that was kind of neat. I have some Shawshank collectibles. I have a movie script and some couple of other things that I know they're in the garage, but I just don't know what box in the garage they're in. But I did have some other stuff here that I can show you from the Shawshank Redemption. One of them is a soft cover book, Frank Darabont, the Shawshank Redemption shooting script. And I was fortunate enough to get this at the prison that the movie was made. And during the reunions and some of the special events where people that uh, were involved with the film have come to the prison, I was able to get some of the pages autographed uh, where they where they showed up in the movie, I had the actors sign uh, where their lines start. This particular autograph on page 254 would have been of the gentleman that played the banker that Andy went to see after he escaped from the prison. I don't want to give any spoiler alerts, but uh, if you haven't seen it, it's well worth a look. If you have, you know what I'm talking about. So I have that. I do have a regular shooting script. Um, I was able to pick up a... I guess a movie movie trailer, movie preview, if you went to the movies back in 94, I think, when this came out, uh, you would have seen, or, or 93, you would have seen a um, movie trailer or upcoming movies. They would have shown you before the feature started. This is actually the Shawshank Redemption movie trailer um, done on 35 millimeter film uh, for the movie. So I don't know how many of those are, are still around, but I was fortunate to find that. So I have that. A jail key that um, would have worked, or would have been the style that would have worked some of the doors that were actually at the Mansfield Reformatory. However, the interior jail scenes were filmed about a mile away from um, the Mansfield Reformatory in a factory in Mansfield uh, where they built the set for the interior of the jail. Uh, but this is kind of cool. The SS doesn't stand for Super Sport or anything like that. It's the Southern Steel Company, which actually made this key. But I thought it was SS for Shawshank. Not really, but it fits. So that was that was kind of interesting. This really has nothing to do with the movie. It just happened to be a, a an actual jail key that would have been the style that was used in the reformatory, but not the not the movie. Uh, in the movie. Red uses a Keef lensatic compass. I think that's how you say it. And I've, I've come across one. This is the closest one I can find to the one that was in the movie. I don't know if you'll be able to see if I can get it to focus on that instead of me. There you go. That would have been kind of like what Red would have used to find a uh, particular place that Andy wanted him to locate. When Andy escaped, he sent a picture postcard to Red that was uh, Ellis Redding number 30265 Shawshank Prison and it was postmarked Fort Hancock, Texas and this is a copy of that postcard that Red received from Andy after Andy got out uh, you notice there's nothing on it so but Red knew that that was from Andy 
when Andy escaped, and this isn't in order, so I apologize, uh, he used a social security card and an ID card at the bank to withdraw money. And there, uh, he had a wallet like this, and inside the wallet was his ID and, and the social security card, and his, um, his signature was a spot-on match, if you remember from the movie. Let's see if we can get that on there. There's Andy's wallet. So here is um, here's Andy's birth certificate from the state of Maine. And if you're wondering, well, it was filmed in Ohio, but why is it Maine? Stephen King wrote Shawshank Redemption. Rita Hayworth in the Shawshank Redemption. He is from the state of Maine. So the prison in, in his book was from the state of Maine. And when we do the when they do the um, Reunions and things at the reformatory, they take down the state of Ohio flag and they fly the state of Maine flag. Um, just kind of a, a neat reference. Um, Andy instructed Red that if he ever gets out, he should find a certain area in Buxton that has a wall and a tree. And along that wall, you'll find a piece of black volcanic rock that has no earthly reason being in a Maine hayfield. And I have picked up a little bit smaller version of the rock that Red eventually found. This this wasn't in the movie, but it's it's a um, piece of black volcanic rock that I like to have with my stuff. So I got that. Underneath that rock, he would find something buried. And again, this isn't from the movie, but it's just like the one that was used in the movie. It's a tin can that originally held Benson's English Choice Confections. It was a candy tin with the RMS Queen Mary on the front. There's a couple versions of this tin that are popular. There's another one that shows a smaller boat next to the Queen Mary. The one in the movie is like this one. There was no other boat along here. So if you find one of these, this is just like what, uh, what was used in the movie. Also in the movie, Andy bothered people for quite a while before he could actually get a library for the inmates in the Shawshank prison. And the story behind that is they went around and they found used library books, book sales, garage sales, anything they could find in the immediate area that, that had to do with books. They bought as many as they could just to have books to put in the movie. The belief was after the movie they were going to bulldoze the prison. Thankfully they didn't. It was saved. But they left all the books behind, and they said, well, what are you going to do with the books? And they said, well, when you bulldoze the building, just take the books with the, the rubble. Uh, so the books were saved, and they are being sold at the reformatory in the gift shop area. They are marked with these labels to show that this was one of the books that were purchased by Castle Rock Entertainment and used in the movie Shawshank Redemption. And the only reason why I picked this one is because it's it's kind of small. So it goes on the shelf and it fits with the other stuff very nicely. One of the other things is in that tin, there was a letter that Red received from Andy explaining things. And there's a copy of that letter that I have to put in the tin. And the last thing that I have to show you from the movie is... The warden was a religious man, gave each of the inmates a Bible, and Andy's Bible, uh, early in the book, Exodus chapter 1, um, Andy was able to obtain a rock hammer, and in the movie he put the rock hammer inside the Bible, and that was the chapter 1 of Exodus is where he chose to put the rock hammer and it looks something like this. This is not the rock hammer, but it's it's very similar, and it would go in there. So this was something that um, that I made. I was able to find something that looked like the rock hammer, and, and was able to uh, save this from the trash, and made it that way. So that's it for now. I do have a lot of sports jerseys and other things that I'll show you. Some baseball jerseys, a lot of Cleveland Indians uh, historical jerseys and some NFL and college football jerseys. So we'll get into those at a later date. I hope you enjoyed the stuff I showed you. I do have more to show, so please stay tuned. 
join me again if you would. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. And bye.